In 2020, the Peace Corps evacuated thousands of volunteers from all over the world. Now, more than two years later, volunteers are back serving communities. Carol Spahn is CEO of the Peace Corps. Carol, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So prior to the pandemic, uh, volunteers were in 64 countries around the world. Where are you right now? Well, we are very excited to be inviting volunteers back to 48 countries, and we have volunteers on the ground in 23 countries. Is there, what's the timeline for getting fully back up to where you were before the pandemic, or is that still the plan? Well, we would still love to get back to our pre-pandemic scope and the number of volunteers that we had in service. There's still considerable uncertainty around COVID and we are going back in a way that keeps volunteers safe. So we're going back gradually and a lot will depend on how the pandemic evolves in terms of when we get back up to our pre-pandemic scale. And how has the pandemic changed how the Peace Corps operates? Well, again, clearly the safety and security of our volunteers and of the communities that we serve is of primary importance. So we have new safety and security protocols. Um, we have looked at our programming to see how we can program in a safe way. And we are looking to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, COVID-19 has disproportionately impacted countries around the world and countries where Peace Corps serves. And so we will be part of that response and recovery effort. And that includes things like education and food security, as well as combating misinformation and disinformation around the vaccine. I was surprised to find out that your volunteers actually deployed in the United States to help with the COVID response. Yes, it was only the second time in history that we have done so, and we did so at the request of FEMA. So we had 158 volunteers out in four or five states around the United States. And it was terrific because their cross-cultural skills enabled them to reach communities in the United States that are underserved or may have been missed. And it was very exciting to see volunteers in my own backyard in Montgomery County. And they used those language skills. They used Swahili, Amharic, um, in addition to Spanish and French to really convey the importance of getting vaccinated. And it was important for people to have a trusted community member really there to help them through that effort. You know, the pandemic uh, forced all of us to become virtual and do things on, on Zoom and, and things like that. You, um, you piloted a, a virtual service uh, pilot. What, what's that about? Well, it's been very exciting to see that roll out. And it started really as a request from one of our host governments that said, please help us um, get information out there to our communities on social media. And they asked for virtual support. So we stood up a program. We have people who are donating their time and really people who served in the Peace Corps from every prior decade of Peace Corps service. So people who originally served in the 60s and 70s are donating 10 to 15 hours a week and working with you know, communities that they um, you know, engaged with quite a long time ago. And, and for some who are more recent evacuees, they were really able to have some completion and, and really have that engagement. So are you uh, continuing that program? Are you going to be expanding it? Well, we are continuing the program. Um, we are determining if we can continue it in its current uh, configuration, um, you know, or if we move forward in a different way. But we think it's very important for volunteers to be able to serve in a variety of capacities. And some people aren't able to leave their home, their family, and commit to two years of service abroad. So we think it's a very important complement to our on-the-ground volunteer cohorts. You know, you volunteered for the Peace Corps many years ago. Tell us about your experience. Well, I volunteered alongside my husband as a small business volunteer in post-communist Romania. So it was four years after the fall of communism, which was a fascinating time in history. And I think about what's happening in the world now and you know how it's important to really meet the moment. And at that time, I grew up in the Cold War. We didn't know, you know what was happening in, in a lot of those countries. And it was just a great gift to be able to go and live and work alongside the people of Romania. You know, it's, it's a very different world. Uh, as you just mentioned, since 1961, which when the, when the Peace Corps was established by President Kennedy, how has the Peace Corps changed and evolved over those many years? 
Well, you mentioned one of them, which was the, the virtual service, which was our, our most recent addition. We also have a program that's called Peace Corps Response, where people who have more advanced technical skills can volunteer for nine to 12 months. And we really do encourage that um, complement to our existing programs. You can imagine that all kinds of other things have changed. Two of the Peace Corps' goals relate to cross-cultural exchange. And the ability to do that now on Zoom is just tremendous. We can have volunteers in communities real live time, you know, conveying and working with um, schools here in the U.S. You know, there are a lot of young Americans who have a heart for service and who dream of helping others around the world, but they've got student loans. They can't afford to volunteer. What do you say to them? I say, come with us, volunteer. There are a variety of programs for deferring those loans. Um, the student loan crisis is very real. I don't want to discount that in any way, um, but Peace Corps can be a very important pathway to federal service, and it is truly transformational in terms of your um, career, your perspective. Um, it, it had that impact on me. I was an accountant before uh, joining the Peace Corps, and it changed my life. So it, it, is a, it is a big step, but one that's really important, especially to meet this moment. At what point is it too late to volunteer for the Peace Corps? It is never too late. Uh, when I was country director in Malawi, I had one of the oldest serving volunteers at the time. She was 82. She just contacted me. She wants to go back. Um, you, can, you can volunteer at any time. All right, Carol, thank you so much for your service and for coming in. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.